day and welcome to a sequence for just the every day. I teach a lot of uh, corporate and um, studio classes as well as a lot of private clients. So if you're in any of those categories, if you're a person who sits at your desk, who is an athlete, who stands, who walks places, if you're just a regular human being, uh, the sequence will be targeted towards you. You can definitely drop some, th some things out if it doesn't feel good in your body. Um, and you can also sort of take it up a notch and do excellent chaturanga push-ups. Um, listen to your body. If you're very new to yoga, then maybe take it real easy and just do one or two things. Um, we're gonna start in seated cross-legged position. Uh, we call this Sukhasana. Sukha in Sanskrit means ease, and asana is pose, easy pose. So we want to sit down nice and easy. I'm using a half lotus, so we'll come into regular cross legged position, so regular seated position. If you have blocks, you can put them underneath your thighs if you're feeling that your hips are riding high and it's too much to relax your hips, you can stop the movement. Um, otherwise, try to maybe even sit on a block or a thick book. Uh, the joy of cooking is always a good option because it's nice and wide for your sit bones and it's nice and tall to give you that height so that you can relax your hips. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. So take your palms down or take your palms up, close your eyes, feel that your shoulders are relaxed. And just start to breathe. From the minute we wake up until pretty much when we set our head down on our pillow, we're moving. So just take a few breaths, sort of releasing wherever you are, especially if you've just woken up, if you're in the middle of your day, if you're at the end of your day. Let your jaw soften, your tongue is releasing from the roof of your mouth, the shoulders relax. Just feel the breaths in, feel the breath out. So find that wave of breath in there. moment to center yourself with a thought of gratitude, of intention, of dedication, why you're here and doing this and what brings you to your mat and to your movement each and every day. And open your eyes, reach your arms up and look up. And we'll start with a twist over that one side. So I'm over my right. You want to take that other hand across the thigh, the palm can face out. Very nice and easy for the spine, lift tall. And then exhale, release, inhale up, arms, exhale, find the other side. So less touching, more lift in the chest over that opposite shoulder. Breathe deep. Very good. Come back to the center, arms reach to the sky. Take a side body stretch, bend that elbow, take that right hand down, and try to maybe look up towards that top hand. You're really trying to open up and stretch through the rib cage. Either looking up or down, finding your gaze point. Your gaze point is to use where you're looking, where you're focusing. And then change sides. Take that other hand down, bend the elbow. You don't take a ton of weight there, but you're trying to support yourself. And reach that other arm up and over. Breathe deep. Face is soft. Feel okay, breathe out of the mouth. And then take both arms up. This time we're going to tuck both fingers behind you or tuck both palms down, tuck the chest forward. Breathe in and out. Don't let the head fully fall back. We're just trying to open up the chest and not letting our neck like hinge too far back. Take two more breaths. One more breath. So if you're feeling that the, the legs need to be one in front of the other, the pressure of the legs might be too much, find what feels good, walk your hands forward, cool. You can keep the forearms off the earth if you want to do a stretch and inch your fingers forward, your forehead might touch them and it might not, that's okay. I like to move a little bit so I can stretch up and down the spine. Somewhere along the way, I'll just fall into the pose, just getting a deep stretch in the outer hip. 
the inner hex. This might feel really tight for you. You might be up here. Your hips might be red. This listen to your body. Try not to hurt your knees at all. You should just feel um, a little discomfort, but no pain. Let's see, sir. I have to start to sort of distinguish what that difference is in your own body. And that's having a conversation with your body and listening to what it's telling you. We're going to come into tabletop position. So this will be my front of the mat. I like to focus my um, energies looking out when I practice. When I'm working with students, try to point in the direction of the sunlight or the windows. Hands underneath your shoulders. Let your tops of your toes rest. Spread your fingers wide. We'll start with some simple cat cows. Gently looking up, dropping the belly. So you're almost trying to bring your tailbone and your crown of the head together. That's the inhale. Then the exhale. Curl and round. Try to Tuck your tailbone under as you curl and look towards your navel. That's the exhale. Breathe in, look up. Breathe out, round. Breathe in, drop belly. I like to bend the elbows a little bit. And then exhale, curl around. And again, inhale, drop belly, look up. And then exhale. And last one, inhale. Starting to get all movement of the spine. Exhale. Come into neutral spine, lengthen, tuck your toes under. Exhale, shift your weight back to your downward facing dog. Just start to pedal your feet just to stretch your hamstrings, the arches of your feet. Pedaling, bending, letting your head hang heavy. Now, I have a couple of clients that have um, issues with their arms or they can't come into the down dog. An option is just to stand at the top of the mat and fold over the legs and just let your fingertips touch down and bend your knees. So you can come to the top instead of a down dog and just do the same thing with your fingertips touching, bending one knee and then the next. And then instead of stepping one leg forward for a posture, you would step one leg back and then come into it. So we'll stick with down dog. So just know that there's an option for you. Taking your right foot forward, put the left heel down, come into warrior one. Arms reach up towards the sky, square the hip points off, palms face in. Take your hands to your lower back. Lift your heart up, you can use a strap here or a hand towel, inhale. Exhale, fold, taking the right shoulder on the inside of the right leg. Work to not let your bum come out towards the right. You're trying to keep everything midline towards the middle of your spine, towards the core. Think about a line. You've seen some mats where there's a line between the mat. You want to stay in that center. And try to let your neck release. You can gently look towards one side and then the next. And then on your next inhale, press through your feet to lift up back to where you're one. Your legs are working. Exhale, take the hands down. Step your left, your right leg back rather, down dog. And move to the other side. Step your left leg forward. Right heel spins down. Lift and rise, square the hip points forward. Strong arms, press that outer back foot. Nice and strongly rooted. Take your arms to reach towards your back. Interlace the weird way that you don't like. Lift, inhale. Humble warrior, other side, exhale. Try to keep both shoulders now towards the earth equally. Squeeze the heel of the hands together if you can or work in that direction. And keep your left hip coming inward rather than that left hip coming out. Again, you can look towards one side, and then the next, and then let the head drop. Rise, inhale, warrior one. Breathe in, look up. Take the hands down. Step back to down dog. Moving through a couple vinyasas, inhale, shift forward. Chaturanga lower. Breathe in, lift up. Down dog, breathe out. Look forward, inhale, bend your knees and step or jump. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, reach. Exhale, sun see peak. Sunday, sun bees now. Inhale, reach your arms up, feeling a little bit warm in the body. Exhale and fold. Inhale, lift in. Step or jump back, high to low plank, chaturanga, breathe out. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, down up. Five breaths, let your head hang heavy. Root through your heels. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Let your head relax, look between your thighs, pull your navel in. Look forward, inhale, bend your knees and step right up. Hold under your legs. 
Inhale, rocks. Exhale, stand tall. Surya so Namaskar B. Inhale, sit low, reach high, squeeze your thighs together, look up, shine your heart. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump back. Last time I jumped, I'm going to step back to high plank and lower. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Put your chin into your chest now, we're facing dog. Take the right foot, step it between your hands, left heel spins down. Lift, inhale, strong legs, look up. That's the in breath. Take the hands down, step back, hide a little plank, chaturanga and dasana. Inhale, come into your back bend, strong legs. Exhale to your downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, help it forward as you need. Rise, inhale, warrior one. Take the hands down, start your exhale through chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe here, five breaths, feet are parallel. Hips with distance apart, try to root the heels. Pull the low ribs in. Especially for women, we like to just press the hips up, point the tailbone up and really curve the back. Our job is to lengthen the lower back. Let the head relax, keep the arm bones plugged into the body. And then on your last exhale, look forward, bring your knees, inhale, and step or jump to the top. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, Utkatasana, inhale. Let's stay right here, our first static pose. Take the hands to heart, twist to the right. Take the elbow across the thigh, keep your knees nice and even. Draw your hands to heart center. Chair pose. Take an inhale, hands to heart. Exhale. One of my clients yesterday mentioned how I really like twists. <laughs> Most of my clients are usually sitting in some variation a lot. Whether you have a job that requires you to, we're just a sitting sort of culture. Exhale, fold. And there's a lot of tension that gets built up. And it can actually lead to a lot of um, issues with going to the bathroom, feeling stressed. A lot of our hormones are sort of to the lower body, lower chakra. Inhale, rise all the way up, arch your back. Exhale, hands to your lower back. Interlace your hands, press the palms, look up, inhale. Pull, pull your belly to your thigh, exhale. So it's really important to find ways to twist. If you have any spine issues, there are variations that you can twist into. You don't want to find relief in your spine particularly if you're holding this extra weight in your front body. Let your head relax, take a couple breaths, belly to thigh, exhale, fingertips down. You're gonna crouch, so lift your heels up, place your heels on your, um, your bum, on your heels. If you have a block or something, a wall to steady you, otherwise we're gonna to try to draw our hands to heart center, stretch the arches of our feet, keep the shoulders over the hips, pull your navel in, get nice and tall, and then stay right here, or you're gonna plant your hands down in front of you, lift your bum up into your crow. Put your knees towards your triceps. Even if you're not coming into the shape and you're like, mm, not working on that right now, but coming into the shape itself, you're getting a nice stretch in your spine. You're engaging your quads, putting all weight between the entire hand, not at the heel of your hands. Lips looking forward, maybe one leg lifts, maybe another. Think about the action of the abs how much stronger you're getting. Lifting up, maybe pressing the heels to your seat, and then exhale, jump back to Chaturanga. Lifting up, inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take your left foot forward, come into warrior two. Sitting down nice and deep. Keeping the shoulders over the hips. Nice and long and tall. Reverse your warrior. Right hand gently touches right thigh. No pressure on the knee. Tailbone down, belly up and in. First few will stretch through the left side, up and through the back. You can either look down or you can either look up. On your next exhale, left elbow, left thigh. Right arm reaches up and over. You can stay right here or take your left hand on the inside or the outside of the foot. Maybe the palm presses down. Try not to fold though. Keep it everything lifting. Don't sink into your hips. You're still strong in your pelvic floor. Pulling in your navel, bending to the left knee, strengthening your left quad. Come back to warrior two. Shift into high lunge. Square your hip points up, pull your navel in, reach the arms up and back. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Find Anjaneyasana. 
So try to keep the left knee coming forward. It wants to lift up once you lift your, your arms up. It's just what, it, what happens. So the work is to keep the left knee over the ankle, concentrating on your practice. There's nowhere else for you to be except right here in your body, creating heat and that energetic flow that is the life force, the prana. Right elbow hooks across your left thigh, twist, or you can take the right hand down, left arm up. You can always drop that back knee down. Right, so lots of modifications for wherever you are. If you were pregnant, you can spin that left heel down, take the left hand on the inside so you have space for your baby. Take a couple of breaths. Very good, take your hands down, bring your front foot, step into plank. Chaturanga lower, exhale. Inhale, lift, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let's do some core. Come forward, inhale. Come to side body, stretching. You can always take the left knee down. Put the left foot behind you if you need support, or put it in if you want to challenge your balance, or keep your legs nice and straight. If you want to add a challenge, put your right heel into your left thigh. Try not to sink into the hips. Get nice and strong, stacking shoulder over shoulder, adding a challenge of looking up, and then come into plank, try to run a lower exhale, breathe and lift up. Pull back, exhale. Other side, shifting forward, coming to side plank. Options again, feet from the back. The right knee comes right underneath the hip. Right foot can come behind you. Or you can add the challenge of putting that right foot in or keeping the legs straight. Strong legs and moving into a variation of side tree, keeping everything stacked and looking towards that left hand. Try not to lock that. that Hand that's down, the elbow, look straight. Inhale, plank, chaturanga lower. Inhale, lift. You can skip these vinyasas as well. Exhale, down dog. Take your right foot, step it to warrior two. Rise yourself up. See that the right heel is intersecting between the left arm. So you can see the back body. My shoulders are over my hips. Arms are reaching. If you have tight shoulders, bend your elbows. Don't let your hands get soft. Stay strong so the forearms can build muscle and strength. Go ahead and come into your reverse warrior. Stay low in that left knee. Left knee is over top of the left ankle. And breathe, looking up or down. Left hand is just gently touching your left thigh, no way on your left knee. Breathe. Feeling nice and hot already. Keep bending through that right knee. One more breath. Exhale right into your center angle. Reaching the left arm up. Maybe the right hand comes down on the inside or the outside. Be mindful that you're not tilting forward what I'm doing here. Rather, I'm peeling my chest open. And that elbow, wherever you are, it's either the thighs pressing into the, the tricep or the bicep, or you're pressing the inner thigh into the tricep. Both is going to keep the connection of the lengthening and the core strengthening and a gentle lumbar twist. Looking up, take a couple breaths. Pressing through that outer back foot, and then coming back to warrior two. Staying strong in that right leg, that front leg. Shifting into high lunge, moving into Anjaneyasana, high lunge. So moving into our back hands. Working all parts of the body, that left heel is lifted. Square your hip points forward. Take the arms. I like to connect the hands. If the arms are reaching, sometimes they don't feel as even. So notice that in your own body. Keep the navel engaged to protect your lower back. Moving from your thoracic. Your thoracic spine is right where your bra strap area is. Roughly, that's like the target middle area. Breathe in, find it. That right knee wants to lift. Our work is to keep the knee over the ankle. We're trying to strengthen. The, the, the yoga practice is a challenge. So I know I'm a human being and I like the path of least resistance and I usually want to go into something that's easier. So in my own life, in my own practice, try to find that discipline, right? We have our energy leaks in our lives, the things that we like to our vices, I guess, are the energy leaks. And then feel and understand where your own energy leaks are in your own practice. Take your hands to your heart, tilt forward, so powering up through the legs. Left head down, left elbow across the right thigh. Both variations, you can take the left knee down. Wherever you are, get a nice hook of that tricep across the thigh. Get strong in your core. As you twist and look over the right shoulder, breathe deep. 
I haven't really focused a lot on the breath. I've been letting air out of the mouth because I've been talking a lot, but ideally you want to breathe ujjayi breath through the nose, through the nose exclusively. It helps to clear energy channels in your body, and it literally like cleans the snot out of your nose. So if you feel insecure about breathing through the nose, the more you do it, the more you're going to actually clear the literal nasal path. Go ahead, take your hands down, step back into plank position, try to run the lower exhale. Inhale, look into your up dog. Exhale to your downward facing dog. Look forward, inhale, bend your knees, your parents up or jump. Hold over your legs, exhale. Heel toe your feet, hips a distance apart. Collect your big toes, look forward, inhale. Fold, exhale. Knees can stay bent if your hamstrings are tight. You just want to release the neck, release the face, point the elbows out. And then as you feel open, start to straighten your legs. Belly is active. Breathing deep. Head below the heart is very cooling for the body. It's restorative. We just did a lot of movement, feeling heated. And we'll move into the second variation. Bend your knees and slide your hands underneath your feet, toenails to your wrist crease. Try to bring the weight towards your toes. So you're giving your hands a little bit of a massage. And then fold on your next exhale. Again, you can start to straighten your legs, right? But try to keep the elbows pointing out. So find what's gonna give you the most benefit, but also understand where is the easiest things for you to do. Try to work on the things that are more hard. So for me, I like to straighten my legs, but then my arms reach and I just get a less stretch of my spine. So I'll bend my knees and point the elbows out and I can deepen the stretch in my lumbar. Eventually all the pieces will come together, maybe by the end of my lifetime. <laughs> but there are things that I, I know that I want to steer clear of because they don't feel good, but they're the things that, I, that we need to do. Go ahead, release. Work back into your pro, bring your feet together, place your hands down, look forward. It's nice to work into these arm balances so you feel strong in your arms, feeling balance in your feet, in your hands. You're going to exhale, jump your legs back, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Go ahead, step yourself to the top of your mat, hold, exhale, inhale, so weight bend in your knees as you reach up, exhale, hands to your side. So let's go ahead and stand in um, a tree pose, stand on your left foot, and then bring your right heel up. I have to remember what body part I'm using. So you're going to put that right heel into your calf, thigh, or ankle. You don't want to put any pressure on the ankle per se. You want to actually just put it above the ankle with the toes down if you're feeling like you need the support. Otherwise, into the calf, above the knee, on the thigh. Avoid the knee at all costs. Keep your hip points square forward and angle in. Draw your hands to heart center. All right, and just feel balanced in that standing foot. Find one point that's not moving. And from here, keep that focused gaze with your arms reach up. The work is to not let that right knee hike out through the right hip. Navel in, shoulders relaxed. Breathe deep. Bring your hands back to your heart. Forward. Exhale, take the foot down. Find the other side, relaxing the right toes. Pulling the left heel gently above the ankle, towards the calf, or towards the upper thigh. Hands to heart, lift tall, navel in. Find that focal point that's not moving, and then reach your arms up and over your head. Pull the navel in, keep the shoulders relaxed, face is soft. If you want an added challenge, you can start to look up. Working from the middle of your spine as you reach those arms up for a couple more breaths. Press, draw your hands to heart. Take an inhale, lift that left leg forward. Exhale, toes touch down. Make your feet nice and wide, as wide as your mat, your heels in, your toes out, coming into Malasana. This is also another Jessica signature. I think hips are really important to have open. So if this does not feel good, you're gonna come up a little bit higher, so you're not pressing into the knee at all. You're still gonna work your abs by lengthening your spine, putting your elbows to your thighs. Otherwise, sit down nice and low. Putting your heels in, if you notice your heels lift, make your stance a little bit wider. Draw your hands to prayer. Stay here for as long as you can, at least five breaths. 
Try not to round. Lift tall on the spine. Press your elbows into your thighs. Relax your feet. And then focus on your breath. Maybe meditate on your breathing. Maybe close your eyes as much as you can. Even think that. Think positively about what's happening. And then fold over your legs. Point the toes forward. Interlace your hands behind your back. If your hamstrings are tight, bend your knees. Otherwise, start to straighten your legs. Squeeze the heel of your hands together. Even if they don't come together, try to work towards that action. And eventually they will meet. And then look one side with the head heavy and then look to the other. And we'll let your head hang heavy. Let the hands gently release down. Gentle sway from side to side. Pull the heels in slightly as you bend one knee. And then the next. And then we're going to come down to the earth. Coming back into a seated position, we're going to work into John Yushashasana. Extend your right leg, pull the left heel into the right thigh, square your hip points over that right leg, reach up through the in-breath, hold over the exhale. If your hamstrings are tight, bend your knees, keep the foot flexed, the quad active. If you're really tight, just relax into it, keep the foot the foot flexed, head hangs heavy. If you feel nice and strong, Keep the core active as you reach forward. Maybe your hands reach beyond or reach for the outside. Try not to just round into it. Keep the core nice and strong. Slight bend at your elbows. Go ahead, lift yourself up, and we'll just change directions. Put that right heel into the left thigh. Square your hip points over that left leg. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, other side. And make those adjustments in your body. If this right knee is really lifted, wrap like a like a, a thick sweater or a thick blanket or put a block or a heavy book. Fold over your legs. Grab the outsides of the feet. Somewhere along. Keep the knee pointing up towards your chin. And you want to try to look towards your toes. Try not to just round and flip. You'll work into the spine and the belly and the legs and the arms, the face and the shoulders are relaxed. Five breaths are done. We're going to put both legs in front of us now. All right, and then we'll reach the arms forward and then pull your knees in. We'll move into the vasana. Lift through your chest for five. For four, keep the toes in line with your eyes. For three, hands are reaching. Try not to round two. And one, we'll move into the Arda um, Navasana. Keep your spine nice and long, flex through the heels. And then lifting up, maybe straightening your legs for five, four, three, taking a smile, leading with your heart, and one. Nice, pull your feet together, open up your hips, inhale, exhale. Leading with your heart, putting your elbows into your thighs, all parts of the body, part of the practice, releasing the neck, then lift up, hands on the outsides of your thighs, coming down towards the earth now, I'm going to move my, my uh, microphone here a little bit, and we're going to move into a back bend into bridge, so feel that you're, if you have a ponytail, put it out of the way, you're going to put your feet as close to your bottom as you can, take a little the backs of your heels with your fingers, the toes point forward. And moving into bridge pose is a back bend. You want to press your knees forward, not let your knees flail out. You could put a block if it's nice and light between your thighs so that the knees don't come up. And then you want to lift your chest towards your chin, not to squeeze your bum up. So lift up. There, that, the bum is trying to work, but don't squeeze it, relax it. The knees press forward, and then you can interlace your hands and shimmy your shoulders together. And breathe right here. Find more length. Try to press into your feet rather than just lift your bum up. So press into the entire foot. Knees press forward. Chest comes more towards your chin. Just a few more breaths. And slowly release on your exhale. Coming into happy baby. Starting to 
feel the end of the practice arrive. <laughs> I love the whole practice in its entirety, but it's nice to have a little bit of a pause, getting closer to the end, something to look forward to the rest. I tend to fall asleep in my shavasana when I have classes. Take the knees into the chest, drop the knees to the right, and look towards the left. Thank you. 